Today I'm torn because two of my go-to wells for content are overflowing at the same time. On one hand, we send a thousand additional troops to, you know, hang out near Iran. Hey, the weather's nice this time of year. On the other hand, Trump's passive-aggressive fight with the Federal Reserve just got a lot more aggressive. I mean, at this point, it's gotten about as passive as aggressive as, well, sending a thousand additional troops to the Middle East to, you know, just keep an eye on things with Iran. As if there was a shortage of US troops in the region. Well, for the purposes of this episode, in case the thumbnail, this little corner pun, or the title of this video didn't clue you in, I decided to take Ralph Waldo Emerson's advice and go the path less traveled. Let's just hope it has more of a positive impact than it did in the poem. So today we're talking about Trump saying he has the legal authority to demote Jerome Powell. And Jerome Powell saying, um, no you don't. And maybe the last time I'll get to use this joke, enter head of the Federal Reserve and whitest man to be named Jerome, Jerome Powell. Can the president fire you? Well, the, the law uh, is clear that I have a four-year term and I fully intend to serve it. So no, in your view? No. Yeah, he doesn't have the best working relationship with the president right now. This whole thing is playing at in maybe the most mean girl's way possible. I mean, we're not seeing any direct action from anybody yet, just Trump's lunch table leaking that they're exploring ways to fire Powell, and Powell eating all alone saying, you can start rumors about me, but you can't get me expelled. Now I picked this story partially so I can look at a part of the Federal Reserve I don't cover as much on this show, specifically the politics behind the institution. In an odd twist, it might actually be legally simpler to start a war with Iran than to fire this guy. So first, what is the Federal Reserve? Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this because I've made that episode so many times now, I've graduated from beating a dead horse to beating a bottle of Elmer's glue. For more in-depth investigation of the role of the Federal Reserve, there are going to be some links at the end. For now, let's just talk about the Federal Reserve as an institution, because it's one of the most powerful institutions in America, and because it's the world's largest central bank, maybe even the world, on specific issues of monetary policy. Yeah, you don't want to go shaking this tree unless you have a pretty good idea what's going to fall out. To be clear, Jerome Powell is a Republican who has served on the Federal Board of Directors since he was nominated there in 2011 by Obama back at a time when a leader could promote someone from the opposite party to a position of power, and you didn't have to hear CNN panel's interpretation and response to your favorite sitcom actor's tweet about it. Then when Trump was putting together his cabinet in 2017, we saw, we interrupt to take you to the White House, where President Trump is about to nominate Federal Reserve Board member Jerome Powell to replace Janet Yellen. Yeah, Jerome Powell was appointed Fed Chairman by Trump during the President's not reading the resumes period of cabinet hiring. The basic idea of the Fed is that they can change economic incentives so that people will either spend or save money. During a good economy, you generally want to get people to save money so that when things start heading in the other direction, well, people have some change to spend to switch up the economy's course. The problem is, of course, if you're saving money, you're not spending money. This is where we get to the core of the problem with the relationship between Jerome Powell and Donald Trump, because while the Federal Reserve is making moves that would indicate that the economy is good, Gee, where did they get that idea? America now has the best economy in the history of our country. Trump wants the Federal Reserve to take a break from the norm and encourage continued wall-to-wall -wall spending. Although without going into too much detail, stimulating this economy might be like taking a defibrillator to someone who's perfectly healthy. Our Federal Reserve but is also raising rates too fast because they think our economy is too good. And I say, I don't want you to, every time we announce a good quarter, you have to raise interest rates. I don't want that. I'm very unhappy with the Federal Reserve. Yeah, but they're independent. I'm bringing all this up as backstory because there are a few things people are concerned about with this story, even if this specific legal fight doesn't come to fruition. First, and this might sound odd, but the Federal Reserve is too powerful to be a political entity. 
This is why it's actually significantly easier for the president to fire even Special Prosecutor Mueller than it is the Fed chair. It's an institution that can either make or break an economy short term. So if say there was an election coming up and Jerome Powell was, well, we'll just say loyal to Donald Trump, there are things he could do in the months leading up to an election to make employment explode and GDP go through the roof. Of course, it would come back to bite us in the rear end a few months after the election, leading to large inflation and potential recessions, but Trump would have won by that point. This is why, with such accusations of political bias at the Federal Reserve, they are really, really taken seriously. So that's the risk that some people are worried about. Although boy, by virtue of the fact that I'm reporting this story today, I'm fairly confident I can say the Federal Reserve is independent from the president's influence right now. So now to the question, how do you fire a Fed chairman? As of yesterday, Powell seems pretty confident. Could you clarify what you would do if the president tweets or calls you to say he would like to demote you as Fed chair? I, um, I think the law is clear that I have a four-year term and I, I fully intend to serve it. Now there is a little legal nuance here because the potential strategy right now is not an out and out firing of Jerome Powell, but rather White House lawyers have equipped Donald Trump with the possible blueprint for demoting Powell by stripping him of his chairmanship and leaving him only as a governor. This would mean that rather than being completely kicked to the curb, he'd go from fed chairman to just fed man. Specifically, he'd become a part of the seven-man policy setting team, of which there are only currently five members. Of course, there are only five members right now because Trump's recent nominees have been so unqualified for such important positions, they haven't been able to be confirmed by Senate Republicans. If nothing else, this should tell you how important the Federal Reserve is. This really is the line in the sand for quite a few Republican senators. Now, the original plan was, of course, to fire Jerome Powell, but the Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 and when they did, they foresaw this kind of problem coming, and specifically wrote, each member shall hold office for a term of 14 years from the expiration of the term of his predecessor, unless sooner removed for cause by the president. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably hear this and think, well, removed for cause. I feel like there's a little wiggle room for interpretation there. My cause is we haven't agreed on anything since I've given him his promotion. Now let's see an effect. Unfortunately for Trump, courts have interpreted the phrase to require proof of some form of illegal misconduct or negligent on basic duties. A disagreement over monetary policy would not meet that bar. Of course, this is why the name of the game is now demotion as opposed to firing. This is uncharted territory. Demoting Jay Powell? How, how would that work? Um, I, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Bill, it's a great question. I don't know that they could actually do that. I guess that's why they were exploring the legality of it. So instead of laughing about this, how would this work? The most probable answer is it wouldn't. Politico can also report that the White House team found that they could not, in fact, do any such thing. White House officials hope Trump would let the matter drop. He has not. At the same time, it's not completely out of the realm of legal possibility. If you had no shame and an incredible lawyer, you might be able to enter this uncharted territory. Because well, there's a hole in the act we talked about earlier. While it's really, really hard to fire a Federal Reserve governor, there's a little wiggle room here. That wrinkle owes to a quirk of the Fed structure. You see, Powell occupies two positions. He's four years into a 14-year term as Fed governor, but he's less than a year into his four-year term as chair, and the law is silent on removing a chair. And now I'm about to say something that proves that legally nobody knows what will happen. People are already speculating about what will happen when this goes to the Supreme Court, if it does, because this would be, in the most literal sense of the word, unprecedented. The Washington Post has said if the case ended up before the Supreme Court, Powell might have reason to worry. 
The current Supreme Court rules in favor of more power to the chief executive. Now this might all sound alarming, but one thing becomes clear through reading these articles. It probably isn't going to get to that. Yeah, the sitcom relationship is likely to continue with Trump recently saying in a phone call to Jerome Powell, I guess I'm stuck with you. That's some fun corporate culture right there. We'll see how this all plays out, or more likely doesn't. In related news, in the same press conference where Jerome Powell said, I think the law is clear that I have a four year term and I, I fully intend to serve it. He also announced that, nah, we're still not going to start encouraging spending over saving quite yet. Because he's a strong and independent Federal Reserve Chairman who don't need no executive support. As I reported a few weeks ago, his position is beginning to soften on the idea of stimulus in the event of a specific trade war economic slowdown, but we're yet to see that happen. Link at the end. The main takeaway of this episode is both parties are incredibly concerned with maintaining the Fed's competency and well-functioning, including Senate Republicans. And it's really hard to fire someone on the Federal Reserve before their term ends. I will say, come 2020, Jerome Powell, I don't think you're getting re-nominated. I'd recommend you keep your resume up to date, and I can certainly think of one employer I wouldn't go asking for a letter of recommendation. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! Click here if you want to see a summary of Jerome Powell's most recent Federal Reserve Monetary Policy Strategy. I know, exciting, right? And click here if you want to see an episode breaking down the Fed's constant battle to control inflation rates and why they're mysteriously so low right now. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into law and economics, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.